All right, so we're going to update our um, our cheat sheet, and we already had you know the stuff in here for passive analysis, not as useful. Server hacks were what we used on our uh, our last project. Um, so those we kind of put on there. Um, and then the new ones from this project were how to fix SMTP vulnerability. So um, that one was the mail service. And to fix it, we uh, went to server manager. Then we opened up IIS 6.0. Um, so the, you know, in the middle, we used to say don't open up the 6.0 one. Uh, for this one, we, you need to open up the 6.0 under tools. I guess we should write tools and then IIS 6.0 uh, manager. And then after that, you had to find where it said, anywhere it said SMTP. And if you right click and, and stop, then it shuts it off. Um, and you can tell if it's on once again by doing the net stat and making a text document. Um, but yeah, that's how easy it is to turn off SFTP. Similarly, it's pretty easy to fix loose lipped error messages where it gives you way too much information. This one, we go to Server Manager. Then we went to Tools. Um, and this one, we do IIS, um, not the 6.0 version. Um, and then we went in and clicked on, um, we got to the default web. Um, page kind of like we did for all the other ones for uh, logging and um, directory browsing same place and select or double click error pages and then after you do that you just have to edit settings which is off to the right and um, and you click custom instead of detailed. All right, and that's it for that one. Then we get into, I think, by the time you get here, you'll have already done 231. So we want to update our, our cheat sheet for after 231, which has cross-site scripting. So, the cross-site scripting attack, let's make that underlined. Right, boom. Okay, so cross-site scripting, um, there we go, yeah, good. Okay, so this is when a user of a web page, um, enters code to run in a text box instead of just normal text. Um, for instance, we did a script. Um, you have to start with a regular script and then alert. And this is, you know, low level just to make an alert box pop up. But if you do this thing, it'll show if you cross write scripting as possible. So we did alert and then you can say, uh, you have been hacked. Anything you want, just put in the quote marks. And then you have to end your script, which is slash script at the back. Can't misspell any of those things. All right, so that's one way to check if you have cross site scripting. Um, to fix 
XSS. Um, let me hit one line between there. There we go. To fix XSS. Um, in order to do that, we, uh, what do we do for that? Um, so to fix XSS, we just needed to change the code on the web page so that it turns any input into normal uh, text characters even if they were supposed to run code. Um, picture below. Let's get a picture of that because um, I took a screenshot and did it in class. So here's an example of what it looked like if you just took the code and XSS would work. Here is a line where it says HTML special characters and basically turns everything into just normal letters. So maybe I'll do the picture of this and grab that and put it in here. So uh, where is that? There it is. Boom. So that would make the XSS stop. Um, similarly, for the other one, which was um, not XXS, but how to stop. Oh, wait, not how to stop. The other one is SQL injection. Um, this is where you can go in and get all sorts of extra info out of things like passwords and you can get anything you want out of a database. Uh, from a website connected to a database. Um, so you can get extra information that's connected to a database uh, by entering code into uh, a text box, a web page. Um, so if you know some SQL code to attack, um, let's find what that would look like. Hold on. So the first one of these is probably a really easy one to get. Um, this, this is an easy one. It just grabs the first, actually grabs all the items from the database in the first column. Um, another one you can run like this can go and hunt down some extra stuff. Oh, that's big. Um, can go hunt down some extra stuff like usernames and passwords. Oops. Let's not do that. Okay. So that's what the SQL injections look like. And then to stop an SQL injection, you need to change, similar to the last one, um, the code on the web page. To stop um, programs from running or scripts and turn them into normal text. Okay, so similar to the last one. Um, so to stop an SQL injection, we're going to uh, let me do that. There we go. So how do we do that? Um, I'll get a little snip of those too. All right, so our last one, I, I just looked it up, um, to stop an SQL injection. All you need is code that makes scripts stop from running. So one, there's this line that you can strip the slashes out. And two, um, real escape string, it basically turns all of them into 
nice little strings. All right, so that is how you stop an SQL injection. That is how you, this line here, this HTML special characters, is how you stop an XSS cross-site scripting attack. And then, uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, update your sheet. And make sure it's all up to date with all this good stuff with SMTP and FTP. So this is how you solve all the problems. All right, talk to you later, people.